So starting in a comfortable seat. And I have been fond of Siddhasana lately, which is a wide seat, tucking for me my left foot in between my right calf and thigh. For they say men, it should be the right foot between the left calf. Yin and yang. So of course there's also sukhasana, cross-legged, that may be more comfortable, or virasana, hero's pose. All of these are well. The topic today, apropos, is power. It is our inner powerhouse, the third chakra. And the chakra system is not part of Patanjali's eight limbs of yoga. It's a different yoga lineage, but I'm a great cross-pollinator and it is part of my training. And I think it's just sort of a cute fun and also ancient practice. It aligns with our endocrine system, our main portals. And for the city of jewels, between the belly button and the solar plexus, and these jewels are your inner sense of power, your sense of ability and self-confidence, trust in what you can accomplish so that you can follow your own dharma and not somebody else's. That's important. We came here to be ourselves, not to live in the shadow of other people's dharma. The color is bright yellow, so I got my mat, since I, turns out, have no yellow clothing at all. I don't know what that says about my power. The seed sound is RAM, R-A-M, RAM, and seed sounds, each chakra has its own. And when we use these chants, either loud or silently, we are really calling upon the energy inherent in that chakra. This chakra connects to the belly, particularly the liver, the pancreas, so those are the physical ailments. So too much power, too much bile, and we can calm it down too little, not that we need to have more anger, but maybe we need to stoke the fire because a strong third chakra is also a strong digestion. We have more neurotransmitters in our gut than the brain. For every one signal that goes from the brain to the gut, nine goes the other direction. So obviously our stomach has a lot to tell our brain and you know it. Sometimes you'll have a knot in your stomach and you may be fear or anger. We can have a queasy feeling, an uneasy feeling. We can have butterflies. So these are all the languages that our body is communicating to our brain via the vagus nerve, the wandering nerve, the longest of the cranial nerves in our body. So as we work on this area, we also can attend to this wandering nerve. We're going to start with a kapalata breathing, the skull shining breath which is not recommended if you are pregnant, have a hernia, have reason of abdominal surgery, or have a tendency to anxiety or panic attacks. In which case you would do ujjayi, the closing of the glottis instead. For the kapalati breathing, place one hand on your belly because then you can feel the engagement. The in-breath is passive. The out breath is forceful as if you are sneezing or coughing, a strong contraction. And then that creates a vacuum for the in breath to flow in and then And with the hand on the belly, you can feel this pumping action. And that is the breath. Start slow, starting slow. 
And also, I recommend engaging Mula Bandha, the pelvic floor. So as you contract, you also lift up because this pressure that we are exerting is going to have to go in one of two directions. So we can control this. Let's do six breaths. And then letting the breath be relaxed and at ease. Notice maybe there's a little bit more fire in the belly. Don't do this right after you eat, but a great one to do before you eat to stimulate, again, the heat in the belly. We're gonna do it one more time. And over time, you may begin to build up speed so that it looks more like this. Let the speed come secondary, get the quality, get that full sense of contraction first. And then just pause and feel, what did this practice do? We're gonna take our legs out in front, draw the backs of the knees down. Press the backs of the knees down. And then if the hamstrings are tucking, pull the heels up so that the knees are slightly bent. You can sit, well, I'll turn on the sides here. So you can sit tall and not rounding back. Spine is king, always. Let's take the arms up, interlace the fingers, press the palms to the sky. As you press up through the heels, Pressing out through the heels, whether the legs are straight or bent. Press, 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 press. And take the hands down. Let's take the soles of the feet together. Not a lot of external in today's practice. So getting Baddha Konasana from the beginning is a good practice. Let's do some cat and cows rounding as you exhale. Arch on the in-breath. Back and forth. And then let's sit up tall, lifting up through the front spine, reaching out through the inner knees. Lift, 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 lift. Soles of the feet may be turning to the sky. And then let that go. Take your hands to the knees. And we'll bring the legs out in front. And now let's sit down on the mat for Merman Pose. I think it's just a funny name. So we'll start by swinging our legs to the right. So as you swing your legs to the right, let me show it from the front. My left leg is in Baddha Konasana again, and my right leg goes straight back. And I'm just gonna lean. I might go into the opposite side. I'm gonna mirror you all here. So right leg, now I got it right. And left leg goes back in hero's pose leg. Now, can you have the foot Going around, yes. Be comfortable, that is the key. Take your left hand to the right knee, and then the right hand just goes out to the side. So you are on your outer right hip. You're gonna lean, so don't try to keep your left sits bone down. Let your left hip just follow you around into the twist. We have two sets of rotations. So this is really fascinating to me. Um, we have our internal and external obliques. So now as you move, I don't want you to use your hands, I want you to use your obliques. Your external obliques are gonna push you in to the twist where your internal, and they are lower in the waist, is gonna pull you into the twist. As you inhale and lengthen, again, can you sense that the movement comes from your left upper side and right lower side to pull you in. And then we have these little rubber bands, that's what they look like, and each of the spinal uh, processor, just from one to another, and they also moves us into the twist. So we have both a very deep layer and a very superficial muscle layer that twists us. So use the muscles to draw you into the twist. 
As always, inhale, lengthen, exhale, deepen. Can you squeeze a little bit more twist out with the muscles? Not by pulling on the hands, use the muscles. And exhale, come back to center and let's switch. So a twisting practice really helps squeeze out what we don't need. Again, you're sitting on the outside of your left hip, right hand to the left knee and left hand out to the side. So right hand, left knee, inhaling. Sally, I'm looking at you. There we go. Leg, and see, I love, I can see y'all. Lifting and exhaling and use the muscles, using the muscles. Pause as you breathe in and exhale, squeeze a little bit more out. But don't use your hands. Use the muscles, do the work that they were intended to lengthen again. One more time. And slowly release back. And we switch back to the first side. And we start in position one. Now lift the hips and then scoot your right hip to the left heel, towards the left heel. So you just lengthen the whole side waist. Lengthen the side waist. Now take your left hand, place it where the right hand is, and then the right hand goes even further back. So I'm slowly making my way so I can look at my own back body. I'm just kidding, I won't go that far. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, use the muscles, squeeze, 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 squeeze. Now give your left glute a little squeeze so that your psoas, your hip flexors can begin to release on the left side. Lengthen, in breath, out breath, squeeze and twist. One more breath. And take it away. Slowly release. Duk, duk. Swing your fins to the other side. And we start in position one. Lift the hips, scoot the sits bones. It's towards your right heel. Place your right hand, sorry, yeah, right hand with the left is I'm backwards. So it's take me a little, just a second to get my brain to be backwards. And we are ready. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, twist. Let your right glute help out. So that the front of your hip opens. Breathe in, we lengthen. Breathe out, squeezing a little bit more twist out of this one. One more breath. Can we have a look, see? And slowly release back to neutral. Walking the hands back, bring the legs out in front, dandasana. So after a twist, do something that mirrors both sides of the spine, hands by the side, lengthen up through the crown of the head, press the legs down, grounding, consolidating. Let's take the arms up. So this is our upward facing, downward facing dog. Lifting up, reach and take the hands down. Behind the knees, walk the hands back. And we are ready for boat pose, Navasana. So come up maybe a little bit higher on the mat so that you have mat real estate behind you as we lower down. Now first, let's lift the heart. And as you lift the heart, let the, this support come from way down deep in the belly, pulling up and begin to rock back. Keeping boat pose, belly in and up, up, up. So this is a core pose, pulling in and up. And the more you engage the belly, can you get lightness down in the hand and maybe add the oars? Adding the oars, keep the heart lifted, keep the heart lifted so the spine is long, longer on the front. 
shorter on the back, lift the heart, lift the heart. And let's take the hands behind the thighs and then slowly come all the way down. Hug the knees in. And take the legs out. Long legs. Let's take the arms overhead. And then with the heels on the mat, pump your ankle, but let the whole body move with your feet. Pause as you breathe in. So this is a little breathing from the morning sequence. Pump again. Let me get this whole back seam loosened up. We'll do it three times. And pump, pump, pump. Let's take the arms down alongside and then bend up the knees. Now, as you exhale, flatten the low back. So yesterday, no, that was Tuesday, we used a strap. So today you're gonna to use an imaginary strap under the small of your back. You are just gonna clamp the strap down and then lift your right leg up and lower it down. Lift the left leg, lower it down. Keep clamping down on the imaginary strap. We're just having a little date with our psoas and abdominus rectus and abdominus transversus. So part of our front layer. And then let that go. And notice as you let go of the control, your low back just pops right back up again. In and out. Let's flatten and arch the back. Go back and forth a couple of times and do pelvic tilts. And then let's take the right leg up, bend up the knees. And then the closer the knees are to the chest, it's very easy to clamp down the imaginary strap. But the more, the further you take the knees away, can you feel the more you have to engage the lower abdomen to facilitate keeping, again, the imaginary strap. From here, place your arms wherever it's comfortable. As you exhale, let's dip the right heel to the floor. Notice if your pelvis moves, can you keep it completely still? No movement. If the pelvis is rocking back and forth, your psoas is overpowering your abdominal core muscles, meaning your corset, abdominus transversus, your six packs, abdominus rectus. Those are the main ones. So we want balance between that. If this is super easy, take your feet out further. Go further out, extending the legs longer. So this is a variation of UPPs, Urdhva Prasarda Padottanasana. Upward wide leg pose. You can see how this would be beneficial. Let's finish on the left side. And we'll place the feet down. And then breathe in and out of the belly. Now we want the muscles that were just contracted. We want them to release. Well, a strong muscle is a muscle that can engage, but equally release. So in the next one, we're going to solicit the lateral, the obliques again. They were two things. They both bend the body sideways and they help us rotate. So they are very busy muscles. For this one, take the legs in again, knees in, and then straighten the knees to the extent that you can keep the thighs perpendicular to the ground. We'll take 
the hands behind the head. So interlacing the hands behind the head. And again, we're going to draw the low back down, flattening. Now inhale, lift the head and the top of the shoulders. Exhale, right elbow towards the left leg as you lower the right leg to the floor. Inhaling up. And exhale to the other side. Back to center. So now, kind of sort of doing what we did in merman pose, except this time we cannot use the hands to help out. It is all muscle. One leg stays up, other one goes down. We're just going for a walk. So we could call this Urdhva Parita Prasarada, upward revolved foot pose. How long should you go, you ask? Until you can't go no more, where your low back is popping up. That's a good time to take a pause. Let's exhale, lower the head down, bend the knees, place the feet down. And again, belly breath. Breathing in, the belly expands. Breathing out, it relaxes down. In and out. How's the fire in the middle coming along? <laughs> well, take the Left arm up overhead, straightening the legs out. And now I invite you to, with the legs straight, draw the tailbone towards the heels. You're going to use your core, your belly, to roll you onto your left side. So engage, pulling up. You can push into the heels a bit. That's all right. And you'll come to rest on your left side. So we played with this one here throughout the week. Now you want to be all the way up on the left side. You can take your right hand and use it as a rudder so that you're not rolling back and forward, but right up. So we could call this Parsva Supta Chadasana. Now here, either keep the hand, your rudder on the floor, or maybe take it overhead. Tall, supine, side mountain. Now lifting the right leg up and lower it down. Up and down. So your core muscles are now negotiating, creating stability. Back and forth. Holding it up, holding it up. Both legs are powerful. Long and lift it. Take the leg down. Now bend it. And I plopped all the way onto my back. Bend your right leg. Place the foot in front of your left knee. Right foot in front of the left knee, toes pointing down towards your left foot. I just think this pose is so cool. We are in tree pose, right? Now to really mimic tree pose, reach firmly out through your left foot. Reach out through your arms and hands. And now press into your right foot and then lift your hips, lift the hips, lift your whole side, except the foot and the shoulders. And lowering down, straighten the leg back out. As slowly as you can, roll over, Roll onto your belt, not belly. Roll onto your back. Roll onto your back. You can start with the heels and then let the turn 
travel up through the body, but your abdomen is a break, so you don't go kaplunk. You come on to the back, continue on to your right side. And I'm gonna spin about. Right side, shoulders, hips, and ankles all line up. Knees straight. And then again, your left hand is either overhead or out in front for a rudder for stability. So do the one that works best for you today. So notice you keep the abdomen lifted because that facilitate you're not rolling forward and back. I hear my sister in this pose. She said the purpose of the core muscles our exercises is not to make them hard as metal and non-movable. One of the purposes is to get them talking to one another so they can help each other out. So now lifting and lowering your left leg. Now we add a little movement. Notice how everything has to communicate a little bit more diligently to ensure that there is no movement across the pelvis or the spine. Does this side feel as easy or is it harder than the other? Which, is it easier or harder? So that tells us something about our core muscle on one side versus the other. We use our bodies, diff our bodies different from right to left. Now, I'm going to take my hand down so I can place the foot up for tree pose again. Extending the arms overhead, tailbone down towards my right foot. It's flexed as if I was standing on it. Arms extending overhead. And again, lift the hips. Lift the hips. And we get the whole side seam, glutes, and thighs, and core, and slowly release down. Extend the leg long. Ooh. And then rolling onto your belly. So you might want to take a hand here to make sure you don't face plant. And as you come onto the abdomen, let's take the hands beside the side chest and shift the shoulders around a little bit. Draw the legs together, tailbone to the heels, shoulders up and down the back, and we are ready for takeoff. As you inhale, lift the legs, heart, and head. Shalabhasana and cobra into one. So I call this flying serpent. Lifting and lowering. Let it be easy, but not too easy. Not too hard either. Let's do that again. Rolling the shoulders up and down the back. Press the hips down and lift the legs, the heart and the head, breathing, lifting, letting the feet come down, and then pressing up to Cobra Pose. So we came up a little higher, and downward facing dog. So to puppy, and lift the heels. I know, just like that, taking our dog for a little shake about, maybe pedaling it. So using a chair for downward facing dog is sometimes just the happiest dog ever. Being kind. Let's inhale forward to plank pose. And we'll take the knees down again and walk the hands back under the shoulders. Now, if your knees are not loving being on them, 
take a blanket and place it under your shins or knees to protect them from being angry. Nobody wants angry knees. Keeping the spine neutral. I'm going to take the right arm forward. Lower the fingers, pinky finger to the floor, lift it up again. And lower. And lifting. And holding. Notice how the core is supporting the lifting of the right arm. And we'll take the arm down. Cat and cow, rounding as you exhale. Arch on the in breath. Back to neutral. Gaze down. Neck is neutral. And we'll take the left arm forward. So belly button is on the spine. Lower your left arm, pinky finger to the floor, lifting it up. Let's do that one more time and then we'll just hold it. Holding the pose but not the breath. Now we're putting a static load on the muscle. Breathing, breathing. And lowering down. Cat and cow again. And neutral. Right arm again goes forward. Feel the belly button on the spine. Just button right on. Now take the left leg back. Keep the toes down for starting. And then lift the leg. Lift the leg. Exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, extend. Exhale, drawing in and extend. So now we get both the front and the back body. So this is really a winner. Holding it out, hold it, hold it, hold, 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 hold up, and lowering down. Cat and cow. Maybe wag the tail. Sometimes that just feels really good. I know we have another side. Left arm goes forward. Right leg goes back. Lifting the right leg. And elbow. Knee. Extend. And hug in. So now we're asking all the muscles again, communicate. So there is stability across the trunk. Let's hold it. Hold it, hold it, hold it. And lowering down. Cat and cow. Let's tuck the toes under and visit with our dog again. From the dog, inhale forward to plank. And you may have to walk it out a bit. I did. So we did some planks last week too. Great core pose. If you're using the core, but if the trish is too high, no, I'm not using the core. Or if it's a hammock, I'm not using the core either. So there's a place right in the middle where we're using the core. And exhale, back to the dog. Taking the knees down again. Now for this variation of side plank, Vasisthasana, kick your right leg, kick your right foot, I should say, out to the side. Kick the right foot off the mat. Kick it out to the side. So I'll mirror this out to the side so you can see. With the foot out, I'm lining up 
my right hand with my right knee, stretch the left leg back and come to the inside of the left foot. Let's take the left hand to the sky. So I'm lifting my right side waist up. And take the arm overhead, left arm overhead. Now lift the left leg. It's kind of like a spinal balance, except on a different plane. Lift it. Lifting, 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 lifting. And lower the foot, lower the hand. Stretch back through puppy pose and come up to the other side. Kick the left foot out, right leg back. So my left hand, left knee and right foot, same plane. Take the right arm to the sky. Reach the arm overhead, so lengthen the whole side seam. And then we're gonna put some tone on it by lifting the right leg. Lifting, 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 lifting. And lowering down. Stretch back through puppy again. Inhaling. Back through dog. And look up on the inhalation. And exhale, walk us step the feet to the hands. Hands to the feet, hands to the hips. Inhale, press all the way up. Boom. So all week we have done Parsvottanasana to revolved um, triangle. This week, the other variation we're gonna do is Prasarita Padol Tanasana, wide-legged forward fold with the twist. So here I invite you to take your blocks to the middle of your mat. So you're standing facing the long way on your mat. So well, you got time, place, you got room, you got room. You gotta make it work. And I will face sideways. You can see me better when I do that. I hope. Now let's take the hands to the hips. Inhale, step the feet wide apart, wide apart. As wide as you can get. Inhale, lift the heart, pull the elbows together. And then exhale, fold forward. We have our blocks right here for position two. Hands under the shoulders. Lift the heart. Lift the tailbones. And sometimes bending the knees with tighter hamstrings just gives you a little bit more access to the spine. So good modifications. Thank you. Now here, let's begin by just see if we can get a little bit more length out of the spine so you can push your blocks forward. We're going to traction the spine a little bit longer. We want to create space between the vertebrae. One of the best things we can do for degenerative discs, create space so they don't rub and rub a dub, rub a dub, dub, and keep crumbling away. So now pull the hips back, extend the arms forward. Let the head just be long, 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 long and relaxed. But the legs are powerful. Yes, they are. Now from here, move the blocks back. I'm gonna take my left hand, centering the block right under my face, right hand to the hip. Lengthen through the crown of the head, and then exhale, twisting to the right, twisting to the right. Keep the right hip moving back. Maybe take the right arm to the sky. Lengthen up and twist. So that the arms are somewhat perpendicular to the ground. 
using the obliques like we did in merman pose. Push, pull, push, pull, push, pull. And take the right hand down, place it where the left is. Take the left thumb to the left hip crease, draw the hips back. And we begin to twist again to the left. To the left. So right now your right oblique is pulling, pushing you to the left. And the left is pulling you to the left. Pulling up, pulling up, pulling up, pulling up, pulling up. Powerful legs, powerful legs. And exhale. Hand down. Position two, again, with or without blocks. So I'm going to let you be the judge. And also with or without bent knees. Keep the sits bones lifted. Keep the spine long. As we move back to, posi to position three, which is the full forward fold. Lifting the hips. Draw the head down. So you will just go as far as it goes. You may decide I don't need the blocks here at all. I'm just gonna take my head down. So this is a headstand variation. As the head hangs down, shoulder blades pulls upward, away, letting the neck lengthen. Letting the neck lengthen. I'm just gonna take one more breath here. And walk the hands back to position two. Toe heel, toe heel, toe heel. Hands to the hips, inhaling up. And then let's step the feet all the way together. Hoo wee Which now got us ready for our seated poses. Not sure what happened there. I just got a message. Cancel. Sue wants to update, so I'm just going to cancel. So I'm not canceling my Zoom call. Weird. We're going to sit down. So sitting down on blankets, one or two. If you have a strap nearby. You may like that. Sitting on blankets just gives our spine a little bit more height. And then Merj Hasana, three. Let's take the right leg in. And as you take it in, use your hand to pull it in. That way we don't disturb the hip flexors. And with hamstrings, you already got going on. Take a block and place it under your left thigh so you can ground into it. So let me switch. I think you can see what I'm doing. That way I'm still engaging the quads. It's very happy, but I'm not hyperextending the knee. Let's hand or elbow coat hanger the knee with the left arm. And right arm goes back to the floor or to the, another block or height back there. Let's inhale, lengthen up. And exhale, twist. Twist, twist to the right side. Keep pulling the knee towards center. So you have the four corners of your right foot grounded and your left leg is firm. Not rigid, but firm providing stability for the spine. If you think that's a weird comment, relax your left leg and notice what happens to the spinal column. It has to work harder and it tends us up. You lose the height. Let's do one more breath. And exhale back to center. And we'll release the right leg out. If you're using a block, Slide it over and then help the left leg up. Tag the arm around the knee, either hand back. Inhale, lifting. Slide here, I am. And we twist. 
firm, straight leg. Four corners of your left foot. Six bones evenly grounded. Effortless ease as you move into the pose. Right external obliques pushes you into the twist. Left pulls you into the twist. How do they know? And exhale, back to center. Extending the legs out. And if you're using a block for the hamstring, just slide it center and we'll take the arms to the sky. Reaching up. Extending, so upward facing. Downward facing dog. And we'll take the hands down. We'll take the right leg in again. So we were just in Marichasana. Now this time, taking the right knee down to the side. So supporting that with a block. So that it's not hanging out in mid. Again, let me switch. You can see, so it's well supported, not hanging out in midair. Let's take the right arm up to the sky. And turn and bring it back behind you. So I just did a little sunshine move. Take your left knee, take your left hand to the right knee. Left hand to the right knee. Inhale, lengthening up and twist to the right again. Twisting to the right again. Feels sort of a little bit like Merman where we were so very long ago. Let's take the right arm to the sky again. Lengthening up, lengthening up, reach. And now side bend to the left, reaching out over the left leg, reaching out over the left leg. Reach, 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 reach. Elongate. And inhaling up. Get the arm down, back towards center. Use your hand to lift your right knee up. Take it out, slide the block to the other side. And I am ready to repeat on the other side, supporting my left knee again with a block if it needs it. It might not. But the higher you come up on blankets, we tend to need some profit. From here, I start taking the left arm up and I just spun to the left. Right hand, left knee. Inhale, lengthening up and twist. So your belly button is looking at the left knee. Take the left arm over and you're going to side bending. Have a look, see it, y'all? Side bending out over your right leg. So right waist to right leg. Just lay your waist on your thighs. You reach your left arm overhead. Palm facing towards the center line. You're stretching the whole thing. So Janusha Shasna Parita revolved Janusha Shasna head of the knee pose is a phenomenal pose because one of the few poses we get the hip hikers in. But it's a, not an easy pose, I know. It takes a whole hour to get to this part. Lengthen out as you inhale, exhale, a little bit more side bend, it's all right. And inhale all the way up, back to center. Lift the knee up. We got time. Move the block to the other side again. Take the right knee in, releasing it down and supporting it. So now take your strap. And strap your left foot. And the left knee can bend up. It's perfectly okay. Left knee can bend up. You're going to hold the strap 
with your left hand. So my arm is on the inside of the knee. So left foot, left hand, bend up the knee a little bit and that will give us a little bit more movement in the side. So I am turning and looking at my right knee again, turning and looking at my right knee, got the strap, elbow pressing into the knee, knee pressing into the elbow, so twisting again to the right, twisting to the right. If you have a tail on the strap, grab that with your right hand, and we're going to use that for levers to come up. And now press out through the left heel. It's going to pull you down deeper. Pull you down deeper. You may be able to grab the strap down lower. Strap down lower. You keep reaching it, pulling it, reaching it, pulling it. And then breathe into your right waist. Breathing into the right waist, eventually your hands will both hold your left foot. Press out through the left heel, spread the toes, the four corners are still activated. Yes. And inhale all the way up. Lift the right knee, straighten the leg. Get this whole gizmo thing set up for the other side. We get to create space for that fire. Hook your right foot, bend up the right knee, and catch the strap down by the ankle, maybe the foot. So as low as you think, it's a good place for me to be today. And then take the strap end, or the start, not sure where it's gonna go, but I'm gonna twist. Now, as you press out and straighten your right leg, it pulls you down with it, pulls you down with it. And we reach the top arm over, 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 over. And we breathe into the left side body as we reach. One more breath. Take the hands back up again. Lifting the left knee up. We're back in Dandasana. And that may again be with the block. Again, remember, after one-sided pose, we must consolidate. Let's interlace the fingers, press the palms forward. Take the hands to the sky, press the legs down, reach the arms up. Lengthen. And take the hands down. We are ready for a pretty carny. You can either use the blankets or you can use a block. Place it to the side as you come onto your back. Take either your blankets or your block, slide it under the sink. This is under the sacrum. Tailbone hanging off. It lengthens the front body also. So notice that your, your pelvis is moving away from your ribs, not collapsing towards the ribs. Ribs are moving away from the pelvis bone. Let's draw the arms down along and roll the shoulders in a wee bit, but otherwise the arms are pretty passive. We're gonna take the legs in, bend the knees in and straighten the legs to the sky. And just straighten the knees to the degree that it is available. And breathe. Easy. Now 
Let the front body expand on the in-breath. And then let's bend the knees, take the feet down. Squeeze and release, squeeze the glutes, relax. Again, we'll do it about three, four-ish more times. And the last one, lift just high enough where you can move the block out to the side. Let the hips come down. Slide the legs out. Place your hands on your lower abdomen. Feeling the breath expanding and softening. As you breathe in, envision a bright sun right at the solar plexus, well, below the solar plexus, between the belly button and solar plexus. So this is its soft spot. And as you breathe in, the sun grows brighter. It expands. Bright, brilliant yellow. Feeling the warmth of your inner sun, your inner power. Expanding outward. Up into your chest. Down into your pelvis and legs. Live and well. If it is challenging to connect to the visualization of the sun, of the warmth, calling out to this chakra by using the seed sound is like using somebody's name. Rum. And the way that my teachers has taught me is simply saying it quickly. Rum, 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 rum. Either silently or aloud to reconnect to this vital part of you.
And gently let your breath deepen. Maybe wiggling fingers, toes. Rub your belly a little bit. Preparing it for your lunch, maybe. Rock the knees from side to side. Rolling all the way over onto one side. And then using arms and hands, pressing up. Sitting comfortably. Closing the one arm. Take a deep breath in. Bowing your head towards your heart. Towards your belly. So many parts, but truly, just one. One part with lots of movement parts. And we'll draw the gaze up. Namaste.